so it's the time of the day we have to introduce our first speaker. Um, not only is she a former public prosecutor, a pastor, an author, she's a brilliant leader, a strong leader in God's kingdom, and she's also a proud mom of the cutest two Scotties. Our first speaker for the day, help me welcome Bianca Stephen. for what we want to talk about today. So when Julie and Antoinette asked me to speak at this conference, I immediately felt I wanted to speak on boldness, and then when I said it, I said, oh Jesus, please let me have a story. You know, by the time we get to share this message. So many times we attempt um, to follow Jesus in adventures in areas we don't feel competent or confident because that's why we need His Holy Spirit, right? To lead us. So it's going to be all good. Um, I just want you to think about boldness. To me, I, I think about Jesus. And, you know, he, he lived a bold and daring life. And so if you read the stories about His disciples, they also did pretty amazing things, you know. So if you read stories like parting the sea, walking on water, feeding thousands of people, it looks kind of like this, all right, like the video that we just saw. And um, today I just want to say that Jesus wants to do this kind of stuff through your life and through my life, all right? So this is what, so you're in good company. Just nudge someone next to you and tell them, don't leave right now, okay? <laughs> All right, so I quickly just want to read you um, just a definition, my own definition, just on boldness. Um, I'm not sure. There we go. All right, so it says boldness is someone who shows a willingness to take risks, right? It's someone who is confident and courageous, someone who dares to do something that might be considered audacious, All right? So just look at the girl next to you and tell her you're pretty audacious, All right, it refers to a daring action or initiative or someone who is brave, valiant, fearless, unafraid. There's that undaunted word, dauntless. Isn't that powerful? All right, but what do you see when you look at those descriptions? They all kind of require action. All right, so I want you ladies to quickly stand up with me. We're going to do a lot of this today because I think Jesus is saying something. <laughs> All right. I want you to find a friend. Just find one friend. Find someone. Just as you turn around or turn to the back, turn to the front, quickly just find a friend. All right, does everyone have one? Not yet. Okay, so you can't be three friends for this exercise to work. All right, you need to be, if you don't have a friend, just raise your hand. We want, we'd love to help you. Okay, everyone has a friend. All right, so turn your back on your friend. All right, be that girl. All right, turn your back on that friend. All right, so I want you to do something now. We're going to play a little game. Um, I want you to change five things about your appearance, but you're not allowed to let your friends see. Okay, so quickly go, five. Change five things. We're going to be pretty creative today. Don't look. Don't turn around. <laughs> I'm just seeing clothes going, all right? This is the wrong kind of meeting. <laughs> all right, are you ready? Okay, okay, let's do it quickly. Okay, so if you've changed five things, 
I want you to turn around and observe your friend and see if you can see the five things that she's changed. <laughs> okay, if you can't see anything, maybe just open your eyes, you know, just maybe do that. Okay, I'm going to help some of you out. Maybe just turn around again. All right, who could identify five things? Quickly show us by a show of hand. Let's see. Okay, only three of you. Okay. All right, so quickly turn around. Have your back to your friend. You can chat later. Turn around, have your back to your friend. All right, great. Okay, this is a quick game, all right, so you're going to have to respond like quickly, all right. So the next thing I want you to do is to find another five things that you're going to change on your appearance and go. <laughs> Let's get creative. <laughs> another five things. <laughs> Oh, goodness. <laughs> okay, and you're not allowed to undress, all right? Let's just, you know, there are some rules today. <laughs> okay, are you ready? Are you ready to turn around? Okay, let's turn around and see if you can ID what has changed. Okay, are you finished? You're ready? Okay, let's just turn around, just back to your friend. Don't worry too much about getting dressed. All right, just... Okay, so now for the last exercise. I want you to change another 15 things about your appearance. <laughs> Go! <laughs> I'm sure you know how. <laughs> some of you have just given up, you know, let me sit down. This is just too hard, you know. <laughs> okay, but some of you are going, so let's go. <laughs> if, you, if you're ready, have you changed 15 things? Okay, nearly there, nearly there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Some of you are very creative. I'm seeing signs like this, you know. <laughs> okay. All right, quickly turn around and just what do you notice? What are the changes that you've noticed?
Okay, I want some feedback. You can just finish your sentence, maybe just say the last thing. And then you can sit down. Thank you. You can put back your shoes on if you want to. Okay, I want some feedback. I quickly want to hear what did you guys experience? I don't have. <laughs> okay, what else? Hmm? Was it fun and laughter? Okay, that's great. Someone had fun, all right? Someone, did some of you feel anxious? You experience anxiety. All right, what else? Oh, okay. Who of you guys felt I've run out of ideas? I don't have, okay, cool. <laughs> Basically, you know, change five, change five, change 15. Who felt overwhelmed? Okay, cool. Who was inspired? I'm going to change another hundred things. <laughs> okay, I want to talk to you today um, just about the concept of change or being bold during a season of change. Do you realize that we, every day, we have to see change, we have to participate in change. Um, things all around us change, right? You have people around you who you love who might have died in the week that's gone by or you might have started a new job or a new relationship, or you realized you needed new skills for the job you're in. Anyone that can relate with that. All right, so change is a constant. Change is real. And so t today, I want to empower you. I want to, I want to equip you with some things. I want to stir some conversations about how do we be, how can we be resilient? How can we be bold in seasons of change? All right, so I don't know what kind of story you are writing. Who loves to read a boring story? Who loves to watch a boring movie? All right, it's not how we set up. It's like Helen Keller has said this. She said, life is either a daring adventure or it is nothing. And so that is the kind of life that Jesus is inviting us into. All right, so he's saying that um, it doesn't matter where you're at, what your situation is. He wants to lead you in an adventure where you're going. All right, so he died on the cross so that you and I could live a bold life before him, a fearless life before him. He wants to empower you to be empowered wherever you go. And so today I'm going to be sharing just, it might be an old story to you, but I hope that he awakens some new truth just in your heart about that. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to speak from Matthew 14. It's the story about uh, Peter on the boat, walking on water. All right, have you read that story? Heard about that story? Okay, so I want to jump into that. But we start off in verse 21, and it's like Peter is on the, he's busy with the rest of the disciples. They are feeding people. They've just multiplied the lunch. And Jesus says, right, you... Um, you guys finish up here, you get onto the boat, you go across the lake, and when you go across the lake, I'm going to be on the mountain praying. And so it seems like a simple verse, you know, but it's like you walk into a movie theater, ready to watch a movie, and there's the credit roll of the previous movie. That's kind of where we're starting at today. We're walking into a movie. Jesus has now just multiplied the lunch. They fed the thousands. And now he's moving. He's telling the disciples, okay, you guys go across the lake. So Jesus lived a lifestyle of miracles. It was the one adventure after the other. And so he's giving us a glimpse like on one day we multiplied lunch, you know, from one little boy's McDonald's. And now we're moving on. We're going across the lake and Jesus is going to pray. So the one thing that we just want to 
um, just established today is that change is constant. It doesn't matter at what level. If you just think about the life stages of people, of you, of a human being, you know, we start out as a baby, we crawl, we become a toddler, we go to school, we go to high school, we study, we fall in love, we get married, we have one child, we have another child. According to statistics, we have another 0.2 child. <laughs> children, all right? Yeah, that's what we do. I don't know how they do that, you know? I don't know how statistics work. Does that confuse you? Like 0.2 child. Anyway, so that happens. And then when that baby is born, the whole cycle starts again and then people die. All right. So even just if we watch our life stages, you'll just see people changing. So change is constant. Growing into new areas is constant. We can't remain stagnant. And so this is what Jesus is saying. So he's setting them up for another adventure. And then he goes to pray. So whenever you see someone praying, you know intimacy sets us up for new adventures. So I'm just reading the story this week, and I'm thinking, okay, so you guys go onto the boat, and Jesus goes to the mountain. He's going to pray. Does that seem weird to you? It seems weird to me. So, okay. So every time when... I don't know whether you've seen it. We've just gone through a few transitions, some career transitions and personal stuff. And it's been hard because, you know, change is just, it's tough. It's not easy. You have to grow. Grow is never easy. All right. So, um, and every time I remember just before the transition started, I was praying, oh, Jesus, you know, just change. You know, Jesus, we need a change, blah, 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 blah. And then when change came, it was like, Jesus, it, everything's changed. And he was like, yeah, you were asking for it. You were praying for it. But you will find many times when you go into a change, you'll just have this desire for more intimacy with Jesus because you don't want to do it in your own strength. All right, that's what Proverbs 3 says. He says, don't rely on your own strength, but trust his strength. So if you just think, who of you guys are going through transitions or things are changing in your life? Can I just, can I just, okay, great. Do you find yourself just leaning into Jesus and asking for wisdom? And okay, so that's very natural. All right, that's a great place to be because in that place, Jesus is preparing your heart. He's growing your skills. He's just preparing that place to do something amazing. And so even though change is hard, it is extremely rewarding because, because we get to partner with him. All right. So we pick up in verse 24. And so now they're on the lake, right? They're going for it. And suddenly the wind comes up. And it says that the waves battered the boat. Right, so it wasn't easy. They weren't having like smooth sailing. It was hard. All right, so now they're a little bit scared. If you get seasick like me, all right, it's really not a good place to be. And so in that place, they're experiencing struggle and opposition. All right, so many times when we go into change, we'll experience something hard. We'll experience struggle or opposition. Because why? It's like it might be your situation has changed and now that is not so comfortable as it used to be. Or it might be that you're battling with, let's say, about people's opinions. You know, you're so excited about this thing and you share it with your mom and she's like, huh? Ah. All right. So that might be happening. Or otherwise, it might be internal struggles that you and I are just processing. You need to step out in a new role, and you're like, I don't feel confident. Everything feels different. All right, and so this week, I was just reminded again about a butterfly. If you think about a butterfly, they start out really ugly, okay? And they have to morph. They have to go into a cocoon. They feel restricted. They feel limited, and in that process, they say that the complete DNA of that insect has to change before a butterfly is released. It even grows wings, and in that place of restriction, it bats its wings, 
And that is hard, <laughs> right? I'm saying the word hard a lot. Do you realize? It's hard. And so what happens is as he bats his wings, strength comes. And when it's time for the cocoon to be opened, for him to be released, he's able to carry the weight of his body, of that which God has given him. And so if you're in a space today where you're saying, I might feel or I do feel like I'm in a cocoon, it, I feel messy. You know, sometimes I'm crying. Sometimes I'm wondering. I, I don't have it all figured out. You're in a good space. And so um, I want to take you to the next verse, verse 25, where it says, At about four o'clock that morning, Jesus came toward them walking on the water. I'm thinking, Jesus, what were you thinking, right? He could be on the boat with them earlier the afternoon. I'm thinking like four o'clock, Jesus, you prayed a lot, all right? So he came towards them, and then verse 26, he says, they were scared out of their wits, a ghost, they said, crying out in terror. So what's happening here? They are on the waves, all right? They watch what's happening, and the next moment, Jesus comes on the water. And they're like, oh, my soul, their minds are freaking out. Like yours would as well, right, if you saw Jesus walking on water. His minds are, their minds are freaking out. And so in the next space, it says that they called out he was a ghost, and they experienced terror. Terror is an emotion. And so... In times of change, we're confronted by our minds battling, saying this doesn't make sense. And at the same time, our emotions start yelling and saying, you know, you know, this can't be, I'm afraid, or it's overwhelming, or whatever emotion, you, you might be experiencing fear. And then immediately, if you see that portion, it just says they cried out. In other words, there was something of an action. So whatever goes on in your mind affects your emotions and it finds expression in your action. And so I want to show you this just in the next portion of Scripture. I've, I've placed that on your, on your board. But it says, Jesus was quick to comfort them. He said, courage, it's me. Don't be afraid. Okay, so in their place of fear, uncertainty, oh my soul, what's happening? Jesus speaks encouragement. Don't you love it when he does that? Right? He's saying, don't be afraid. Verse 28, Peter suddenly bold. Peter's not so suddenly bold, all right? But it says, suddenly bold, he said, Master, if it's really you, call me to come to you on the water Verse 29, and Jesus said, come ahead. And then jumping out of the boat, Peter walked on to the water to Jesus. So I just want to show you what's happening here. You see, in that moment of uncertainty of, wow, you know, the waves are really big. We don't understand what's happening. In that space, Jesus wants to speak into your situation. He wants to say, calm down, or here's hope, or have courage. And the moment when Jesus speaks into your life, it changes your perspective. You might be thinking, this doesn't make sense. I feel really fearful. But when you, when you experience the presence of Jesus in a situation, and you hear him saying, it's going to be okay, suddenly your emotions are changed. And this is what's happened to Peter. So Peter now suddenly bold because Jesus spoke. He says the following. He says, well, let me walk on water. Have you ever read that? I'm like thinking, why on earth would Peter want to walk on water? I would just say, Jesus, please come into the boat, you know, so we could get saved to the other side. But not Peter. Peter is saying, no, let me walk on water. And I'm thinking, where on earth does that come from? Okay, but that's the impact it has on your life when Jesus speaks. Suddenly, you feel, I can do the impossible. Okay, so this is, this is godly. This is godly confidence. And so, this is what's happened. Verse 29, when Jesus says, okay, Peter, I see the faith in your heart. I see the courage in your heart. Come. 
And Peter, he doesn't say, Peter kind of tested out the water. He sort of put his feet onto it and leaned into it. It said he jumped. So can you sense just the, just the impact that the words of Jesus had on Peter? And I just want to read this again, you know, because if you come from a Christian upbringing, you're like, oh, yeah, Peter walked on water. You know, like we bought bread and milk at the shop, and Peter walked on water, and, you know. But Peter walked on water. So verse 30 repeats the same pattern. It says, but when Peter looked down at the waves churning beneath his feet, he lost his nerve. And he started to sink. He cried, Master, save me. It's so powerful. The moment that Jesus looked at the waves, his perspective was changed. And it shows again just how his emotions, how his confidence left. And then he sank. So whatever goes on in your mind will affect your emotions and will be expressed in your actions. And so this week, just as I was praying, it's just as I was saying, Jesus, you know, we're bold because we're made in your image. You know, so what does that look like? And he, he was saying that, Bianca, if you could change your mind, if you could change your perspective, you'd be able to do different kind of things. And so today, I really just, you know, as we're spending time together, I want to challenge you so much that we all have limited thinking. You know, we sat here and we said, change five things, and you were like going, oh, okay. And then I said, I could change another five, and I saw eyes going like this. And when I said 15, I was just like, oh, my soul. But if the Spirit of God lives on the inside of you, you have the same wisdom and creativity by the Spirit of God than what Jesus had. And so whatever you're thinking of yourself today, like I'm not worth it, my future is doomed, or you know, whatever it is, Jesus wants to challenge those thoughts. He wants you to be limitless because he's limitless. And so... Um, I just remember about two weeks ago at a leadership seminar, we did this exercise that we um, did this morning. And when we gave feedback, I had this revelation. To me, it was a revelation. And I turned to the facilitator, and this is what I said. Okay, so don't quote me on this. Okay, I'm not proud of it, but this is what I said. I said, if you'd allowed us to go beyond the borders of this room, we would have been able to come up with some pretty creative options. And he like quieted everyone and he said, excuse me, just tell me, who told you you weren't allowed to go beyond the borders? <laughs> and I promise you, we are limiting ourselves, I promise you that whole crowd went like, oh. So I felt like the idiot because it was like my teaching moment, Right? But I just, in that moment, you could sense, oh, my soul, we all think like this. And so Jesus just, he, he helps us, right? <laughs> Romans 12 says the following. It says, don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. But instead, fix your attention on God because you'll be changed from the inside out. Okay, so he's given us something that we've just experienced right now. He's saying he wants to change you. Don't conform to what the world says is possible. Don't conform to what your parents think is possible. Don't conform to what your children think is possible. You know, whatever. Line up, align your thinking with what Christ is thinking. What is Jesus thinking? And then he says this, he says, readily recognize, okay? And then he says, and quickly, so readily recognize what God wants from you and then quickly respond to it. Those are keys. He says, recognize what God wants from you. He says, and then just do it. Okay, so just high five someone next to you quickly and tell them just do it.
All right, maybe just um, another thought or so. You and I, just this week I've realized, you and I are 100% in control of what you think, of what you feel, and what you do. I'm going to say it again, it's really cool. I'm empowering you. If you get this, you will be transformed. You are 100% in control of what you think, of what you feel, and of what you do. And so things might happen to us that we have absolutely no control over. But you do have control. How will you allow Jesus to change your mind? How will you respond? What will you do? Over those things, you do have control. And Paul Johnson just says the following. He says, you and I cannot afford to have one thought in our head that is not his. So if you're thinking anything less than what Jesus thinks of you, you're selling yourself short. So I just want to share one story, maybe from my own life. Um, A few months ago, I was ordained as a pastor, and the day on which it happened, um, there was a very hurtful comment made. And I left that meeting, and I felt, this is it. I've had enough, you know, I'm just, I'm basically becoming an atheist because, you know, because church is hurtful and, you know, we all have videos that play in our mind, right? And I was like on one of those videos and when I stepped out, it's like God just reminded me of a sermon I'd given two weeks prior to that. And in this sermon, I'd shared this story about, um, I was in grade nine And um, I had a best friend, and we used to dance together. We used to do modern dancing, and it was loads of fun. And then as we grew, as we grew up, as we, you know, became older, um, there was a bit of competition of jealousy between us. And it came to such a point that that day, we were a group of friends, and she stepped into the circle, and she said, well, you can't be friends with me and with Bianca. So today, you're going to choose. And I remember standing um, in that situation, and I felt completely humiliated. And I stepped out, and, um, you know, I've had to work hard just on relationships, because suddenly I thought, you know, people can't be trusted. You know, you can't really have close relationships. So the enemy really messed up in that area of my life. And even today, I have consistently, I have to choose friendship. I have to choose relationship because somewhere I think, I'm still thinking, you know, I'm just waiting until this dog is going to bite me. But I stepped out that day and I thought, what is wrong with me? And on the day that I gave the sermon, um, I shared the story and then I said, I asked that day, God, what is wrong with me? When I should have asked, what's wrong with you? And God just brought that thought back to my mind. And as I was thinking that because I was in a bad emotional state, all right? I was like weepy, crying, thinking I'm leaving the country, I'm leaving the planet, I'm leaving whatever. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Yeah, you feel that way, right? Sometimes. And so what happened is I just, um, in that moment when, when I realized the truth of what God was showing me, I just said the sermon was on not being offended. I just said, God, I won't be offended in this. This is so strategic. It's right before a whole leadership weekend in Jeffrey's Bay. It's right before our um, RSVP conference that we're hosting. Um, The enemy has been so selective and how, you know, so strategic just in this assault. And I said, you know what? I'm not partnering with this emotion. Jesus, this hurt me, but today I want to forgive this person. I want to forgive, you know, what happened, and please help me. And I promise you guys, um, God empowered me just to walk through that situation, having realized the truth, there's nothing wrong with me. How that person reacted was that person's problem. It wasn't my problem. 
And so, like in the week, I've just had an opportunity to face that situation, to face that person. And so it was hard communicating. I had to be authentic. I had to be real and say, this really hurt me. What you did really hurt me. And um, just to see the reconciliation and the forgiveness and, you know, but the enemy could have stolen that whole weekend. And so I'm coming back just to this. You and I have 100% control of whatever we think, feel, and do. And we have that choice. And so Peter, by the end of that story, the disciples, they are worshiping Jesus. And they're saying, (laughs) this is it. You are God's son for sure. So because of Peter's courage... Jesus helping him, they are now worshiping Jesus. And so today today I want to encourage you that whatever you do, whatever story you write with your life, will inspire, will influence others. And sometimes we think we need to be perfect to do it. Peter wasn't perfect. We don't have to be perfect to be brave. We just have to respond. Because life is messy, but life is beautiful. And so in those moments when Jesus challenges us, saying to us, you know, you have limited thinking in this area. Come out on the water. I'm challenging this narrow-mindedness. I'm challenging these old thoughts. So Jesus is inviting us to walk on the water. And it's, it's so brilliant. It says that where, even when Peter sank, Jesus didn't hesitate. So wherever you are, Jesus is not hesitating. He is right with you. All right, so today I want to pray for you. Um, I'm going to ask the worship team maybe just to come up as we do that. Um, I remember when when God was speaking to me just the first time about um, writing a book. I said, God, who would read those stories? And Jesus just said, what's the point? What's your point? I've asked you to start writing. And I said, Jesus, I don't really know how, you know, to. He says, what's your point? And so whatever excuse you're just bringing up, you know, while I'm speaking, Jesus is basically saying, what's your point? I've invited you to come, you know, and walk on water. I'm inviting you to come and do the things that are impossible for you to do in your own strength. Jesus is not asking you to do anything in your own strength. You don't have to make it work. It can be messy. It can even be wet. Okay, Peter was wet. And Jesus is, this is fine. So just as, you, as you're listening to God, just as you're thinking of what I've said, maybe something has stirred today. Maybe, maybe you're aware of some place Jesus has asked you to step out and start doing. Maybe you're aware of some space in which you know, listen, I have these limiting thoughts. I want to surrender them to Jesus. I don't want to keep on thinking that way because I'm 100% in control of whatever I think and feel and do. Maybe you're at a space where you say, you know, I'm in pain today. I need to forgive someone. Maybe someone has said something. Maybe you know you're just supposed to go and do it. What, what, whatever it is, I know that Jesus is speaking to hearts this morning. And um, I just want to pray to you f- for you today. If you're experiencing limitation, just in any, any area, I want you to stand up with me. I want to pray for you just as a family. So if there's anything in your heart that just resonated with that message of, God, I'm limiting myself. I'm saying things over myself that is not true. I want to pray for you today. So did I speak to your heart? Okay, if I did, if you know these limitations, please stand with me. I want to pray for you today. 
So Jesus, we just love you. Can I just ask you if you feel comfortable, maybe just to put your hands up in the air. You're speaking to Jesus. You're just, you're just surrendering who you are to him. So Jesus, today we're just surrendering, Lord, our own thoughts, our own, our own hearts, Lord, the, the places in our life, Lord, where we just shortchange ourselves. Jesus, places where we see ourselves, but it's not through your eyes. God, we want to surrender those places just to you today. Jesus, we just know today that you are all powerful, that you're all glorious, that you are all amazing. And Father, I thank you today just for chains to be broken. I just thank you for limiting beliefs, Father, just to fly out of the door today. We just choose your opinion. We choose your heart, whatever you're saying. Jesus, we we just, we, just, we just choose the truth today. We just say, whatever you say, Jesus, that's it. And Father, we just thank you that you're crying out of your daughters, that you're saying you're powerful, you're amazing, you're anointed, you're free, you're liberated, you're amazing, you're awesome, you're exquisite. Thank you, Father, that we can just bask in your opinion today. And Jesus, I just thank you that as your words touches hearts, go to hearts, thank you, Father, that you're just changing hearts, that you're just changing lives, that you're just changing emotions today to align and to surrender to your truth. And so just as you take another few moments to speak to Jesus, we're just going to allow the worship team and just Maybe express those desires just in this song. So let's keep connected to Jesus. Let's keep our focus there. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus.